Now let's talk about C-reactive protein. Most of these studies were done with C-reactive protein. In terms of background, inflammation is critical in the formation of athero, meaning plaque, sclerosis, narrowing of the arteries. That's a misnomer because it's not so much narrowing of the arteries. That's what we always thought, that we meaning the scientific researchers. Now it's understood a little bit better that it's not a narrowing process, it's more this inflammation process, which we'll discuss. An elevated level of C-reactive protein, CRP, an inflammatory biomarker, is a strong predictor of future cardiovascular vascular events, even more so than LDL. In two meta-analyses, remember meta meaning larger focus. In other words, a meta-analysis, a meta-analysis is a study of studies. You go in and you look at the science and you look at all of the studies that have been done on a specific topic and you analyze those to see how strong the case is for that specific topic. And in this meta-analysis, they were talking about, how about cardiovascular risk and cardiovascular inflammation? How does that compare to LDL. So in two meta-analyses, they saw strong positive relationships between changes in LDL and C-reactive protein. In other words, there seemed to be some correlation and maybe LDL was a marker of inflammation. Maybe inflammation was a marker of LDL. So again, that raised questions, but inflammation is central to cardiovascular disease and C-reactive protein changes might be independent. That's really the question. Is it independent? And that's where the story that I told you about Paul Redker and Gavin Blake and some of the research that they did began to tease this out. You saw that with the Meteor study. That was one of the first studies that really started to make more of an impact on this question. Here's the information and the authors on the Meteor study. Objective and methods. They were investigating the relationship between C-reactive protein lowering effect of resuvastatin, Crestor, and reductions in LDL causing measuring effects of intima media thickness. Again, that was some of the words that created the acronym Meteor. The study compared resuvastatin versus placebo in the treatment of 984 individuals with moderately elevated cholesterol levels in coronary heart disease during a two-year period. The results. Resuvastatin was associated with a 36% decrease in C-reactive protein, a 49% in LDL, a 34% in total cholesterol, and a 16% in triglycerides, and an 8% increase in HDL. As you look at individual patients, especially LDL, sometimes you can actually see a decrease in HDL associated with statin use. So something to be aware of on an individual patient by patient basis. In this study, the Meteor study, there was no correlation found between C-reactive protein change and LDL reduction. So are those two bullets, they sound like they're mutually exclusive. They're not. Again, you do see decrease in LDL with statins routinely, and you'll see decrease in C-reactive protein as well as the other cardiovascular inflammation markers. When you start analyzing individual patients, it's not always the same patients. These two things tend to happen independent of each other. CRP reduction was more evident in men over 60 years old, and it was also more evident when the baseline CRP was elevated. Here's some other studies that got deeper into this question. Jupiter was a very well-known study in this space. The Prove It Timmy studies, several studies. So the data in this study demonstrated that statin-mediated reductions in C-reactive protein are unrelated to the decrease in LDL and other lipid levels. Statins have a variety of pleiotropic properties. The bottom line is statins have been discovered to have pleiotropic effects. In the beginning, it was known that they lowered LDL. It was not known that they actually had a different impact as well, independent of that LDL impact and that impact was decreasing inflammation. 